Now, one of the first times when the icy distance between the USA and China began to diminish was when the American table tennis team went to visit China in 1971. The two teams had met in Japan at a tournament and a couple of the American players had been talking in a friendly way with some of the Chinese players and the Chinese um, political handlers understood or interpreted this as a diplomatic advance from the American government and invited the Americans to go and play. Now, the Chinese were much better at ping pong than the Americans, and the result was a massive win for the Chinese team. But of course, that was good for their morale. Uh, the American team, apparently, the players said, we've never seen the game played at this level, and they were comprehensively defeated. But anyway, it was a little crack in the armor, a little thaw, a moment suggesting perhaps it is going to be possible for us to, to talk. And what happened later that year is that Henry Kissinger went secretly to China to talk with Mao. And so here they are meeting. Now he gave himself the code name for this mission of Polo. And that's clearly a reference back to Marco Polo, the European merchant and adventurer who'd visited China centuries previously on one of the first occasions when China started to be opened up to the rest of the Western world. Kissinger was on a visit to Pakistan and he claimed to have fallen ill and then someone else impersonated him in the, uh, in the, as he recuperated, while secretly Kissinger flew off to China and got into negotiations with Mao, really pr principally about the possibility of restoring di normal diplomatic relations between the two, and potentially regarding China rather than Taiwan as China at the United Nations. Nixon was very eager for this to be done secretly. And again, everybody in the State Department was frozen out from it so that Rogers, the Secretary of State, didn't even know that this had happened. And knowledge of it was confined to a tiny elite. But it worked and uh, the, the, the welcome given by Chow Enlai and, and, and Mao to Kissinger opened the way to a visit by Nixon in the following year. So it really would be hard to, uh, to uh, overstate the shock that photographs like this had when they first appeared in the American press in 1972. Uh, Richard Nixon, whose whole life until then had been based upon fanatical anti-communism, shaking hands and making toasts with the leadership of communist China. It, it, it astonished the world and it had a revolutionary effect upon diplomatic relations.